we visited with our guide Daniela the very large brick church of San Giovanni and Paolo. This is Venetian Gothic constructed in the 13th and 14th century. An immense church similar to the Frari on the other side of town. You can see the dimensions of the church too and that was begun in the year 1340 and it was finished in the year 1433. So it's a, a wonderful example of Gothic style. And I was, tell, I was showing the floor. You can see that on the floor you have white and red. That is to say we have a chromatic effect and you have always to remember that in Venice colors is are very important because we are in a town where the influence of the Orient is very strong and here you can for instance admire one of the best canvas that we have in the church so the exaltation of San Domenico because they are the Dominicans friars and it has been painted by Piazzetta that is to say in a painter who worked in the 18th century. Now we are going to see a chapel, a very interesting chapel, because there are very important canvases by Veronese. When we go into the side chapel of this ancient church, we hear an interesting summary of the history of the Venetian struggle with the Turks. The Venetian in the first part of their republic, I am speaking about the 13th century, they, had, they made a lot of conquest in the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. In when the, the fourth crusade that took place in the year 1204, they succeeded in conquering the town of Constantinople too. That is to say the actual Istanbul. But later on, starting from the 14th century, the Turks began occupying the territory territories that belong to the Venetian. And so we have this terrible struggle that lasted a lot of centuries. And on the 8th of October of the year 1571, there was this terrible battle won by the Venetian. This chapel of the Rosary in the church of San Giovanni and Paolo in Venice contains some of the most beautiful and important paintings by Veronese, one of the greatest of the Venetian painters of the early Renaissance. In this church we have very important canvases by Veronese. It represents some shepherds that are worshipping the newborn child. You have to observe colors. Colors are very important, are bright, and observe the face of the Virgin too. And the, the, the Virgin is very sweet. This is an effect of another important painter, that is to say Giovanni Bellini, that lived uh, before Veronese, but he will influence all the way of painting of Venetian painting in general. But you can see some, port some canvases by Veronese on the ceiling too, of course. The angel has announced to the Virgin that she will be the mother of Christ. And we have always this idea of color, this idea of architecture in itself. So these are the wonderful canvases. I think that they are the best canvases that you can find in Venice by Veronese. Because it's true that he worked a lot in uh, the Doge's Palace. You can see wonderful uh, canvases by Veronese in the, the Doge's Palace too. But there he was obliged to paint what the government wanted that he painted, in, that is to say, always the exaltation of Venice. He succeeded very well, but in these canvases he was free to express himself. Just in front of the high altar, you can see that there are 10 tombs of, uh, from, uh, of Dominican friars, while the high altar is in Baroque style, it is where it was remade. And very interesting are the, the, the windows that are in typical uh, Gothic style, as you can see. But the funeral monuments that you can see at the sides of the high altar are the main things of uh, uh, this part of the church too. You can see the, the altar, the, um, the funeral uh, monument of Marco Cornelio. And you can see that uh, the background part of it is made in mosaics, like in St. Mark. And another important monument, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the funeral monument of the Doge Andrea Vendramine. And it has been made by very important uh, 
sculptor, that is to say Lombardo. Lombardo is a family, it is composed by all a family that were at the same time sculptors and architecture. And can you observe, for instance, the, the, the sweetness and at the same time the peculiarities that you can see in the small parties, the faces, the, the, the virtues that are represented under the tomb of the Doge have a sweetness and a, a, a beauty that is similar only to the statues, to the Greek statues, because with the Renaissance style we have a coming back to the Greek style in general. I would like to show you a thing, that is to say the chair of the Doge. When the Doge came here, he had his own chair the chair of the Doge, because the Doge came very frequently to the different churches of Venice. Very interesting is the, the canvas that you can see on the right. It's by Lorenzo Lotto. Lorenzo Lotto works at the same time as Titian, Tiziano, but he has a completely different way of painting, more psychological. Observe, for instance, the poor, the poor that are asking for the help of Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony is represented on, an upper, on the upper part. And observe that hands, that hands that are upwards. They ask for money and for help because they, gi they give some uh, um, papers where they ask for, for help. Very interesting, come near. You. The main characters are the three ladies, the three ladies. Yes, yeah, so the groups of these three ladies that you can see in the central part. We are now beginning with the psychological way of painting and it's a, a, a new thing. Lorenzo Lotto was not so appreciated as much as, uh, um, as, much as Titian, for instance. Uh, Titian was very appreciated at this time. Lorenzo Lotto was not so appreciated in this time. Critics appreciated the works, the canvases by Lorenzo Lotto later on. And he was discovered later on after his death, as it often happened with some sculpture painters in general and you can see the difference also between uh, these two funeral monument uh, that is gothic because uh, the the dead is still lying uh, the, the, on, a t on, the, on his tomb as you can see this one it belongs on the country to the Renaissance because uh, the, the dead uh, the, the doge is represented uh, as if he was alive, he is, he is standing, he is walking, he is represented as a strong man. This is typical of the Renaissance period, where in difference, uh, with difference with the Gothic period. And with the Gothic period we have the idea of uh, uh, the death in general. In the, during the Renaissance period uh, we have uh, a new uh, faith in man, so they believe that man is able to uh, overcome death too. Now, I am sorry, we have to go out, so they are coming out, they are pushing out. Well,